What is going on YouTube? I am Brandon. You are back in the Gilstrap garage and chances are you clicked on this video because the brake lights on your Harley are staying on. Just like mine. Just check it out. I'm going to turn the key on. We got some pretty bright lights back there. I'm going to hit the brake pedal. Nothing changes. I'm going to hit the brake lever. Nothing changes. I'm going to go after it right now. It's usually something pretty simple. This started happening. I didn't even realize it for a little while. This started happening after I put these tall bars on there. It was a little bit of a stretch with this brake line here because parts of this brake line are steel. So it's pulling on this housing a little bit and that's where our problem is going to lie. I'm going to open this up right now and I'm gonna show you what's in there. There's a little button that sits inside of your switch housing here and your brake lever has a little tab on it and it, when it, I don't know what just happened. My camera just turned off on me. Probably gotta plug it in. It's still yellow, not red yet, but whatever, besides the point. What I was saying, there's a little button in here. When your lever is relaxed, it pushes that button in and opens the circuit. So it's a normally closed switch held open with the lever pressing on it. Did I say that right? Normally closed and it's held open. No. All right, had to dig out a charger. Well, I did that, found a little piece of scrap paper and a pen and I wrote up a little diagram so I can show you what I was explaining. I did say it right. It's normally closed, held open. So when you're reading the schematics, these are different ways you're gonna see these. These are gonna be each contact and this is gonna indicate uh, the position of the switch. So when you look at these, you gotta look at it as gravity. If it falls down, it, 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 let's say it wants to fall down when you're looking at the schematic. So with the line underneath here, or here, or here, or here, that's gonna be a normally open switch. So this is just gonna be normally open. That'll be normally open, held closed. Something's gotta push on that to keep it closed. Normally open, normally open, held closed. Those are just different ways you might see it in the schematics. This is gonna be a normally closed switch. This wants to fall. So this would be normally closed, held open. This would be normally closed, normally closed, held open, normally closed, that's it. So what we've got, then I decided after I drew that, I said, let's pull up the schematic so we can find it. 2004 to 2005 EFG or EFI. Oh, this is for a wide glide. Same thing that that part of it's not going to be significant. Fine. Found the front brake switch here. The camera's probably not going to want to hone in on that too well. Front brake switch. And you can see through the blurriness that right there a normally closed switch held open it looks just like that so now i'm going to show you what it looks like not on paper and then when i open it up and we see what's going on i'll explain what happens a lot of times with these things so we're going to take our t27 right here and i'm going to take off the master cylinder because well the whole master cylinder and lever perch. I don't know, you can call it a hundred different things. Call it what you want, it's still gonna do the same thing. Okay, I'm just gonna let her dangle there and get a first glimpse before I show the camera. We're off the tripod here, we're gonna try to see this thing as best as possible. That is our switch right there. Now I'll get into what happens a lot of times with these and it may actually be going on. This little rubber boot on here is terrible. I see all the time where these things just rot out, they get weathered, they crack, it's super thin rubber and that falls off. So that boot will get weathered, crack off and it won't allow the little tab right here to engage. That's what happens most of the time. Now, so key back on. I'm going to 
hit the switch in here, okay? And our brake light should be going off. It's on right now because it's not making contact. Push it in and it changes. Okay, well, it looks like that rubber boot may be worn. I'm gonna try something that I don't really recommend. Okay, which way would it need to go? Like I said, don't recommend this because if this breaks, well then I'm out. I need a brake switch and a new set of hundred something dollar levers. I think it bent a little bit. I bent that in a little bit on the vise. Let me see if it helps us out. Rather than break the brake lever, how many times can you say brake? I ordered a new switch. Now they're not very fun to change, but now you guys get to see, and this video gets to be a little bit more informative. So I'm gonna put this back together because even with that brake light stuck on, I'm still gonna ride this weekend. My wife and kids are gone. I am going insane in this house by myself with these animals, and I need to go put my knees in the breeze. You know what I'm saying? So stick around. Probably be a few days and we will pick up on this video. It's been almost two weeks since I ordered these parts. I finally got them and the wires on them are a lot longer than I expected. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. So what I'm going to do to keep this clean and simple and as OEM as possible is I'm going to pull that whole right hand control assembly the whole harness and everything and I'm gonna put it on the bench and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fix it so my next step while my camera charges is pull that whole assembly out and lay it out on the bench and try to get the best camera angle possible replacing the switch because it's pretty small pretty hard to get in there and it's gonna look nicer the way I'm about to do it and it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to see how I take care of it so I'm gonna get it inked out I'm gonna get it yanked out, I'm gonna throw it on the bench, show you what the deal is. Okay, I've got a flashlight set up now so we can see this better. So what I was saying, I've got the whole assembly pulled out, de-pinned, and we've got a little zip tie in there that we gotta cut. Okay, oh, there it went flying. Now, now that we've got this out, we've got a little Torx in there. I think it's a T20 that we gotta move. These things are not fun to put back together. Okay, so you get that one out, out of the way, and now we can push our sensor in and pop this out. It's got a little brass keeper in there. There we go. That's a, the little brass keeper. And now that this is all out, we can, I'm gonna have to cut back the rest of this that I didn't take off before, cut back my heat shrink and expose the rest of the loom. And now that we've done that, we've got this exposed. Oh, I'm gonna have to splice that 
Let's place that in right there. now I did hear you we'll cut this little piece off here and that is the old sensor or the old switch you see where the rubber broke right there now we'll get ready for the new one you can you might be able to see the difference on there how that sticks out just a little bit further that last little bit that we were missing and the nice part about the aftermarket switch is that it's not just the little rubber that you're relying on because that's what wears out and breaks you actually got that plastic piece sticking out so now i'm going to take my harness and match up the length so we're not all cockeyed I'm going to snip that little bit, we don't need all that excess, and what I have to do now, my next step, because all my tools are at work, I'm going to cut this back and install these Dutch pins on the new one. So you guys will see this in just a second, it'll be tomorrow for me, with this cut back and new connections on there, and then we'll get... We'll get this piece that we had to cut all soldered in on the switch, on the turn signal switch. We'll get that spliced in and we'll be ready to rock. Um, I've got the new ends on, the new Dutch pins on. Did those at work because all that stuff is in my service truck, just like the OEM ones. I've got this soldered together. I did not cut this wire all the way through. I just cut back some of the insulation, exposed it, and then wrapped the turn signal switch wire around it, gummed it up with some flux, and laid some solder in there. Before I can put the loom back on, we're gonna get the turn signal switch set in the housing, and then we're gonna get our turn signal, okay, let me back that up. We're gonna get our brake switch set in the housing, then put in our turn signal switch, and then bolt it down. There it is. Whoa, hey, what are you stapling to, homegirl? There she is. I don't like the way I'm pinching this orange wire on this.
how it goes sometimes. Sometimes you gotta take it apart and put it back together 400 friggin' times to get it to where you won't have an issue. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna get, what I'll do, I'll set these two halves together. like that and I'm going to feed the split loom back on and then we'll be ready to go back on the bike so I'm gonna wrap that up show you what the end product looks like and then we'll throw it on the bike together like it was never a part so we're gonna get it routed back through the handlebars plug back in and it'll be about time to test our little switch All right, I've got everything plugged in here. Got the wires around through the bars. I'm going to flip the ignition on and just make sure that everything's working before I pull everything back. Turn signal, turn signal, fuel pump, starter, high low. Boy. Good to go. Now I'm going to get all this pulled back into the frame and then we can put our switch housing together and see if our problem is solved. Right, just squeezing the housing together here. I think I just broke the brand new switch. So I don't know what I just did, but I broke the brand new part. That is an extreme bummer. I guess, I don't know, I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do. We'll see, maybe I can, uh, maybe I can MacGyver this thing and get it back on there, I don't know. But I mean, the switch works, just not like it should because I broke it. All right, good news, bad news. Bad news, I did break that button off of there. Good news, it's got a little lip on it where that rubber boot. What, I got grease all over my face? Yeah. Jesus. What, why do you bring stuff like this home? Why are you like this? <laughs> why are you Wait, like this? Put your hands up. <laughs> okay, good news. The seal or that button has a little lip on it where it sits inside the rubber boot, so. Check it out. Oh, blinkers on. So, it's working for now. I'll give it a little test ride, see if it holds up. That is gonna have to be replaced again, but that sounds like a job for winter when I tear these bars off and get them powder coated. And I've also got some good videos coming up. I'm gonna clean up this whole thing, cause I don't, I love this Lexton charger, but I don't love how this is kind of hanging here. I've got these lights hanging here. I've got some stuff planned. I've got some parts in on how I'm gonna clean this thing up. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that. And good luck to you on fixing your brake light. An another note, I need to dub this in. I could have saved a ton of time and just cut those wires inside this handlebar housing, installed the new switch and solder them together in there. But I didn't want to do that. Wanted to keep it clean. Wanted to keep it stockish. Um, I don't know. I'm happy with the result. Bummed that I broke that piece. But overall, pretty happy. So, see you in the next one.